we have seen the differential form of mass conservation. Now let's consider the differential form of momentum conservation. And for deriving that, we have to apply F equal to ma for an infinite small fluid particle. We'll consider the forces on the fluid particle first, and then we'll consider the acceleration on the fluid particle. And for forces, um, I'll consider the pressure force and the viscous force. I'll ignore gravity here. One can add that in later if necessary. And the um, so here what I'll do is I'll consider the pressure force. Going back to the same infinite small fluid particle that we wrote mass conservation for, now we want to write F equal to ma for that fluid particle. And we'll keep assuming throughout that the density is constant. That's incompressible flow. So that's an assumption embedded into the form of the equations that uh, I will be writing down. And if I draw out the pressure force in the x-direction, so that's the x-direction, there's P on this face and pressure acts along the inward normal and there is, you know, the pressure on the right face is slightly different from the pressure on the left face. And we are looking in the limit as delta x tends to zero. So it's the same game as, uh, as before. And the net pressure force is going to be delta p, okay? Uh, this p and this p are going to cancel, so I'm going to get delta p, but that's uh, acting in the negative x direction, so I should say minus delta p. And I have to, that's pressure, that's a force per unit area, so I have to multiply this by the area, and the area, so that's delta y, so the area is going to be delta y times some dimension perpendicular to the screen, and I can, I can assume one without the loss of generality. Okay, so that's the net pressure force acting in the x direction. And I can write the pressure on the right face in terms of the pressure on the left face using a Taylor series expansion, okay? Since, uh, and, and that's the same game that uh, we have been playing. So that's the first term in the Taylor series expansion. That's the second term. And in the limit as delta x tends to zero, these are going to drop out. Which means that delta p is given by the gradient of pressure in the x direction times delta x. And I'm going to get net pressure force in the x direction um, is given by this expression. What I've done here is I've taken this and substituted this for delta P over here. Okay, so this comes from that using this um, expression over here. This is the volume of the fluid particle, delta X, delta Y uh, times one. So if I take this to the left-hand side, um, I'm going to get net pressure force in the x direction per unit volume is given by negative of the pressure gradient. Similarly, I can write the net pressure force in the y direction, and I can put it together and get the net pressure force on the infinite small fluid particle per unit volume is given by this expression. So this is in the x direction. This is in the y direction. I've taken the negative sign out. Um, and this is usually written as minus del p using the, the del operator. That gives you a sense of you know, how you write the pressure um, term in, the, in, in f equal to ma. And next, we'll consider the, the viscous forces on the infinitesimal fluid particle.